good church. But it's so good that they have this opportunity to be with you and stand for you. You know, well, you know, I'm sure you've heard a lot of uh, energetic thoughts and all of those thoughts and really great ideas. What I'd like to do is to kind of take you back a little bit to the beginning of my journey and some of the things I've learned. I was thinking about uh, something that I had heard many, many years ago by Vincent Barton. Some of you should remember that when you recognize it. He was a very famous football coach for Green Bay Packers. When he first took over the job, he got all the football players to the locker room where they do all the drawings and plays and studies and stuff. He said, we're going to go back to the basics. He said, you grab the football and tell the doctor to say, this is a football game. So that, to him, was a basic. So I'm going to kind of take you back to some of my things, some of the things that I'm doing uh, today after 45 years under contract as an insurance agent. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I didn't hear you in your life or, or whether it's just not understood, but um, in that period of time, when I first joined the round table in 1977, so you know, I've been a member of the top of the table now for 13 years. And the reason that I've, that when people ask me, how did you get that? Why are you doing this? How did you get that? It's one of those things. It's these basics. You know, the things I'm going to share with you uh, this afternoon are the things that I do on a regular basis that I keep my that keep my focus and keep me focused on the journey. And I hope that you and what I'm going to share with you will be some things that you can take back and put into your own practice. We we all work at sales process. So you'll hear me talk about that in some of these other speeches that you're watching. But there's marketing, opening the case, case management, closing the case, place case service, and what is our ideal client. You know, we do it as a business. But you know what we're going to have to do? Do we do the things that we're supposed to do on purpose? And one of the most important activities in my prospects, which I think is the basis of all of our success, is what I call fluidity. It kind of goes back to that same football camp that we went to a little bit ago. And that is, is that when I, when I was a kid, high school, we practiced early in the morning, we practiced late in the afternoon because it's the clock, and they called it fluid. And so I kind of pointed out in my own wonderful process. And I said, if I get two names, two names every day, and I put them in my inventory, at the end of 30 days, how many do I have? And I have six. Now, I don't want to ask any of you to show your hand, but think, ask yourself this question. How many of you have 60 names in your inventory right now that you've got queued up to have energy for in the next 30, 45 days? And if you were to put two names, just two names in every day, what would that do to your business processes and your business uh, production over the next uh, six months or a year? That one simple thing can create a huge difference for you because it's something I can do. But it's not just two names. Okay? It's two specific things. It's two people that agree when I call them to talk to me about what I have. So in other words, when I call them up on the phone, I say to them, you know, Joe, I'd like to come out and talk to you about your life insurance program. Would you be willing to discuss your insurance program with me? If they say yes, it counts as a name. If they say no, then obviously it doesn't count. You might be in another inventory where I can call them back at the same time. But the point is, is that my two names have agreed to see me based on what it is that I've asked them to talk to me about. So it's not just a, I want to stop by and see you. No, no, it's not loose. It's very, very specific. When I first came into the business, the, the fellow that introduced me as a stranger was a man named Ralph Brown. Ralph was my manager. 1957 until 2000 when he retired. And now I train him. He, he sits in my office and he knows that he's working with me and my daughter and my grandson. But we've had a very long relationship. He, he was my $25 involved in the But he taught me a simple phrase. I said, 
where you've got to be. In other words, if you're busy, if you're doing the things that you need to do, if you're doing them consistently, then it's going to do you this long. It's going to do you this long. And activity breeds activity. Are you doing the things that you need to do and are you doing them consistently? And allowing yourself a chance to fail, which also gives you Another important thing is building trust. And you might say, well, how do I build trust? So you build trust in a number of different ways. We don't have time today to go into the specifics of it. But trust is basically your credibility, your reliability, and your self, uh, the way you're able to demonstrate your influence to you and your client. So credibility, reliability, trust, intimacy, building that basic relationship. The more you're able to do it, you do that. The more you're able to focus on it, the better you're going to build on the relationship with people for five minutes. Now, a lot of people say, get referrals. I'm not sure there isn't anybody in this room that doesn't agree that referrals are the heartbeat of our business. But let me suggest to you that the types of referrals that you get are a direct result of the types of decisions that you make. And one of the ways that I built trust is I built what I call a solution for you. And this is where I identify somebody I want to meet. And then with that one degree of separation, I find somebody that can meet. People do business with the people they trust. So the best way to build trust and credibility and a new introduction, a new prospect, is to have the trust transferred from somebody that you 